in this episode, we discuss what macros you should be on when in a fat loss phase and doing heavy ass exercise. question was, hang on, just getting his laptop, <laughs> he's even pulled up a research paper for this oh. one, got so science, it was from Twitter, someone used the Ask the LJ's hashtag on well Twitter, done. who was it, it was Tabish Nadim, nice, at Twitter Tabby, Tabby, T-A-B-Y, not Tabby Cat, what's the question, question is, what macros should be followed while undergoing fat loss coupled with heavy exercises? I assume it just means weight training on that front. So what macros should be followed? Well, let's not assume. Let's cover all our goals. He may talk what? about heavy endurance work as well. Yeah, but there's that. that Activity one? levels. Heavy? Heavy endurance work? I... Heavy exercise. What's the words? What are the actual words? Heavy exercises. Mm. Right. I'm... We'll cover bases, but we're going to just take it as in lifting weights. Yeah. So, we cover this in the academy, but the really brief kind of rundown of this is, um, and, and this, these ranges cover a whole heap of uh, personal preference, but they cover a whole heap of context, basically. You're looking at anywhere between 1.8 and 3 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. In a deficit. With in a calorie about. deficit, obviously. You won't lose fat unless you're in a calorie deficit. That's just basic science. Um, three is, yeah, that's pretty high. Um, that is once you start getting really, really, really lean. Or if you really love steak. Yeah. Like if you just can't live without three, four steaks a day. And remember, there's no like hard rule, as in you can't go over 2.8 grams of protein. No. If you want to, and you want it for more of a appetite suppressant reason, or just because you like the yeah. steaks or the chicken, yeah. then feel free to go above it. There isn't no like cutoff point if I have more protein than that. Yeah. It's the highest research driven kind of protein intake, I believe, um, that has been shown to positively impact body composition is apparently. 4.4 grams per kilo of body weight, which was one of the, the Josie Antonio studies that came out last year. However, all of that was self-reported data, and I'm pretty sure they weren't eating that. Um, so the Helms systematic review on uh, protein intakes in lean dieting individuals tops out 3.1 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass, not body weight. Fat-free mass, which is just kind of and that was on lean athletes as yeah. well. Yeah, so we're talking bodybuilders. Uh, the study I pulled up. Oh no, no, we need fat and carbs first. My bad. Fat uh, again. There's a lot of room for personal preference here, but anywhere between fifteen and thirty-five percent of total calories uh, is generally safe. Leads to enough fat that food tastes good. Um, shouldn't kind of mess with like any hormones too much. Um, and should, if you include it as a part of a mixed meal, should keep you relatively full um, for sufficiently long uh, after you've consumed that meal. And then carbs, basically, figure out your carb intake as the remainder of your calorie intake once you've set your protein and your fat. Fibre, um, go with roughly um, 10 to 15 grams per thousand calories of food that you're eating with a, like a minimum of about 20 to 25 grams. Uh, alcohol, keep it minimal generally because most people when they get pissed like kebabs. Pizza. Pizza. And burgers. Yeah. And chips. And more drink. There you go. So basically alcohol messes with your appetite. It That's going to cause more damage to your fat loss efforts than um, the alcohol in and of so. itself. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so just keep it to a minimum, generally. Kind of a few drinks per week probably isn't going to harm you. Um, just depends on what your goal is. If you're looking yeah. to get shredded on stage with getting your glutes nice and striated and getting a mat, then obviously the less calories you have, the less room for 
foods and alcohol and stuff mm. like that. So again, you've got to take it on an individual basis. So it would vary, even in regards to the protein intake, male, female, obviously fat-free mass, mm -hmm. people don't really have a, a great accurate way of measuring their body fat percentage. But if they did, they're obviously using Helm's systematic review of 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass, but that is on lean individuals. If you have a lot, a large amount of body fat to lose, you obviously have less fat-free mass. So if you're looking at body weight, you're gonna be probably closer to the, the lower side of the protein intake. I tend to do um, it differently in regards to set pro well basically find out calories work out their total daily energy expenditure mm -hmm. take off the deficit you want uh in regards to how much body weight you're looking to lose per week which is obviously another factor as well the rate of weight loss looking at around 0.5 to 1 percent per week if you've got a higher body fat percentage then you want to be looking at that one percent body weight drop per week if you've got low body fat percentage so you have uh minimal body fat then you're probably looking at a 0.5 percent per week and then yeah once i set protein i tend to set fat at 0.8 to 1.2 but again i can go lower i can go higher i'm not going to cry about it and that's grams per kilo per kilogram yeah. yeah and then the remainder of the calories will make up the carb intake so looking at uh, how many grams how many calories per gram of carbohydrate it's for so all you need to do is take those calories remaining divide it by four and that will give you your grams Boom! Do we have the paper or do we, we need do. the paper? I'm going to just, just, just as a, a practical example of actually something that was done as a, a really, really recent research uh, paper. This was earlier 2016, so it's only a few months old at the time of this video. Um, done by the phenomenal researcher that is Stuart Phillips. If you are into research and nutrition research and you don't follow Stu Phillips on uh, social media, get following him, he is one of the most prolific researchers when it comes to protein, like, out there. And his research is really solid. Um, but he took some overweight people, so these people were um, about my height and about... My weight. Yeah, basically. No. <laughs> that they were, they were about 100 kilos. Yeah, well. um, <laughs> so, took them and put them in a 40% calorie deficit for four weeks. It's a big deficit. Big, big calorie deficit for four weeks. Uh, one group ate 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, and the other group ate 1.2 grams of uh, protein per kilogram of body weight. So in terms of calorie percentages, the control groups of the lower protein uh, group was around about 15% protein and 35% fat. The uh, other group was about 35, 30, was about what, 30% protein? Thereabouts. 35% protein and 15% fat, so swapped, basically. Um, and the higher protein group, over four weeks, they got them training as well. They were training quite a lot. Uh, over four weeks, these people uh, grew um, just over a kilo of lean body mass. In a 40% deficit. Obese. Untrained? Yeah. Untrained, yeah. Um, however... Still in a 40% calorie deficit. How much weight did they lose overall? Um, they lost um, nearly 5 grams of fat, 5 kilos of fat mass in those nice. four weeks. So lost 5 kg of fat, gained, gained 1 kg of fat free mass. Yeah. So about a kilo a week, but massively improved body composition at the same time. Um, yeah, they were untrained individuals. But again, this is a really, like... Positive take home, but then most for, of your clients will probably yeah, exactly. be in that category. Yeah, so so don't be scared of going for a bigger deficit. Bigger deficit and a higher protein intake will get your clients looking better in a very short amount of time. This is four weeks, that's a month. Again, this is one study. Yeah, this one study. Admittedly, it's a very well done study. Uh, we will. I'll link the um, the paper. It's a free full text paper in the. The description box down below, like down below, but it was. I'd recommend reading it. Um, I'm also reviewing it in um, May's Shred Education as well because it's just such a good study, and there's so many things you can take from it. Right, let's call it time because I want to keep these nice and short. Yeah, I rambled a bit. Sorry. So, question of the day: How much protein intake do you have per day? Kilograms, not pounds. We're Brits. 
As in grams per kilo. Yeah. Yeah, that one. 